Multiplying and dividing fractions is much simpler than adding and subtracting of fractions. It's a matter, for the most part, of removing common factors in the numerator and the denominator, multiplying being simpler. Let's look at this problem. 15 sixteenths times 8 fifths has common factors in the numerator here and the denominator there, a common factor of 5. I can remove those factors by saying 5 goes into the number 5 one time, and 5 goes into the number 15 three times. If I can find other common factors in the problem, I should continue, and I see that there happens to be an 8 that divides into this numerator and this denominator. If I didn't happen to notice that it was an 8, I happen to see a 2, I could do that, but it would just make the problem a bit longer. I would have to keep going and going with this. So try to find the greatest common factor that goes into each. So an 8 goes in here once, and an 8 goes into 16 twice. And when you multiply fractions, all you do is you multiply straight across. So I'm going to take the numerator, 3 times 1, and get a value of 3. And in the denominator, 2 times 1, and get a value of 2. And my answer is 3 halves, or 1 and a half. In case you haven't noticed this, um, commonly you are allowed to leave an answer as 3 halves as an improper fraction, where the numerator is larger than the denominator. That's a pretty common thing to do nowadays. Watch for the directions, though, in the problem to see how they would like your answer expressed, either as an improper fraction or what's called a mixed fraction. Three halves is the same thing as one and one half. Let's do a division problem now. I'd like to take 3 fourths and divide it by 3 sevenths. When you divide with fractions, you have to invert the second fraction, the 3 sevenths. You have to flip it and call it 7 thirds, and then follow the process of multiplication. Some people say skip, flip, and multiply. So again, you take your first fraction, 3 fourths, and you multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. And now you go back to reducing in the event that there's a common factor in the top and on the bottom of those fractions. And I notice that a 3 goes into here once, and a 3 goes into here once. And I'm left with, in the numerator, 1 times 7 is 7, and 4 times 1 is 4. 7 fourths, or 1 and 3 fourths.